all right we tapped in we tapped in let's get it started what's going on everybody welcome back to the pickup game on the jeff j says youtube channel like this video if you love what you're hearing tell a friend to tell a friend share and subscribe we got the nba talk we got it all going on today we focusing on my hometown my team the new york knicks and i had to bring my brother on sean with a w you can hear him on knicks film school you can hear him on live from the mecca on twitter spaces sean what's going on brother Jeff, I am happy to be here. I'm I'm honored that I'm your third ever guest. Um, I'm listen, listen. I've been a big fan of yours. I've known you forever, but you know, uh, everything that you do usually turns out well. So I'm glad to be a part of this um, of the pickup game. Uh, part of the Jeff J says network um, that is coming soon. There will be a Jeff J says network, and they have <laughs> well, all yeah. Hey, what's the reward for good work? More work, right? Exactly. So yeah, put those blessings on me. I need that. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Let, let's get into it, man. We talking to talk seven games in the books, and number seven was the debut of the beard, James Harden. His his his. Fifth, what is this like? His fifth debut. He, he's almost like a, a, a wrestler who retires and then comes back and then retires and comes back again. But he's making another debut with the Clippers, and you already know the vibes. Knicks beat the Clippers one eleven to ninety seven. Sean, give me your thoughts on, on on this game and how it went. Um. So. There was a lot of anticipation. I was actually at the game yesterday, uh, well, Monday, because um, obviously, you know, the biggest talking point in New York basketball has been the performance of one Julius Randle. Will he bounce back? Because, you know, we're seeing like these, all these stats about the worst five games start in NBA history or the first, the worst, like, like no one shot this poorly after like, and it's like him and like dudes who played with like peach baskets, right? Right, right. <laughs> um. But I, I felt confident that he would have a bounce back game. I didn't think this would continue. I knew we I, we needed I, I knew we needed that game because even though we all agreed that the schedule was tough to start, and I would have signed up for five and five, uh, two and five just doesn't look good. Uh, nope. Does not look good. Uh, three and four isn't great, but it's a lot better than two and five. Um, so and of course. You know, we get to play against James Harden in his debut because, and I'm actually looking this up just to make sure that I have this right, because James Harden was traded literally about a week ago, and <laughs> this dude, this dude didn't play. How many games did he skip? And I was like, okay, you're gonna play against the Lakers? No. All right, you're gonna. All right, cool. Uh, you're gonna play against who else? Uh, yeah, he, he could have played it was against just the, Lakers, the Lakers. Against Lakers, and I was like, no, he's gonna make his debut. Six days later, I was like, oh, at Madison Square Garden. How convenient. They always wait to show up because I forgot who said it. They said uh, NBA players treat uh, the Garden like Carnegie Hall. Right. Um, so so glad they sent them home. I don't know how – like, I don't know how that's going to work over there with them for uh, – with Russ and Kate and, and Kawhi and Paul George basically being a floor spacer with Harden. I don't know how it's going to work. Um, but listen – RJ played well, 26 points on 16 shots, I believe. Yep. Uh, Brunson's still struggling a little bit, but I'm not worried about him. Dante G DiVincenzo, great game yesterday. Um, like, it was – and shout-out to the bench. The bench unit is what pulled away in the fourth quarter. Um, it, to the point that, like, even the game was still somewhat close with four minutes left, Ty Lue said – he waved the white flag and, like, and, 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 and said, you know, we'll, fight, come, we'll live to fight another day. So – um, I'm not surprised that we won. I am, like I said, three and four is a lot better than two and five. Yeah. And, you know, and then tomorrow night on Wednesday night, we have the Wemba Yama experience coming to town. And um, I have some takes about that, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that later in the show. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Something that, that really impressed me about that game, I think that's the best, by far the best the offense has looked all season for the Knicks. The ball was moving. They were running a variety of plays. I'm seeing quickly throwing a uh, backdoor alley-oops to Hartenstein. P they're running the pistol, the horns. They're running every 
NBA Twitter buzzword offense <laughs> that they that they had in their bag, and it looked early on, it, they just weren't executing. They just weren't hitting the shots, but it it looked good, right? And then yeah. this game was tied. This game was tied going into the fourth, and IQ, Hart, Hartenstein, DiVincenzo, and Barrett ran the Clippers out of the building in the fourth. At one point, a 16-5 run. And just to tell you what, what what boggled my mind about what I was watching, it really looked like it was Duke, Kentucky, and Villanova <laughs> against the Clippers. The way they turned it up. They turned mm-hmm. it up to a whole other level. Steals all over the court, transition offense. They they beat the 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 Clippers. They they outscored them in second chance points. By like 20 points, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me let me let me let me get that. Let me get that uh, official tissue stat. Their fast break points, 26 to six. They outscored them by 20 points. And I'd love, I you know, I'm, I I I can't do five things at once, y'all. I apologize, but I would <laughs> love to see what the breakdown was in the fourth because it felt like they got mm-hmm. a few steals and Hart was throwing it out to RJ, and and they and they it felt like they forced them to say give it up yeah. give up the game you this is a debut you, you, we we proved our point and there was even a point in the game where because of the rotations and how it has to be mm-hmm. randall and brunson come back in for rj and i want to say quickly rj and quickly so they brought some of the starters back gave rj his like two three minute in the fourth break before he may have had to come back in and i was shook i was shook because they were that team that five was humming so well and usually tibbs will just stick with it throughout yeah until until it's two or three minutes to go and that's when they wave the white flag but it, mm-hmm. it seemed like he's still trying to fig- figure out the rotations and the rhythms and what he needs to do in the different combinations but they were able to hold the fort and i read a quote from Ty Lu where he said the way our offense was playing they scored 34 points in the fourth we wasn't coming back Straight like that. We wasn't coming back. It wasn't going to happen. And I'm not going to have nobody get injured. So good game. Live Like you said, Sean, live to play another day. The other thing I, I, I want to say, I, and I don't care anybody said I was jumping out the window. I've been tracking this. This man, Mitchell Robinson, is playing all NBA basketball after seven games. Not all star. All NBA. He's doing things on the court that shows up in the in the stat sheet and doesn't at the same time if you watch these games you can see how transformative he is on defense he's number one in offensive rebounding percentage in the entire league at one point going into the games last night or monday night i should say going into the games on monday he had out offensive rebound at least two or three teams in the nba he yes. was leading like now because everybody went nuts. He he's <laughs> two he's two rebounds behind the Oklahoma City Thunder in offensive rebounds. But 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 behind a whole team. This is why the Knicks right now are second in in rebounds, first in offensive, defensive and rebounding percentage and they they're just dominating the glass and with him I think he we're realizing he's the he he's starting to get to that fully realized version of himself that Knicks fans saw when he was first drafted and the potential. The potential is now meeting the reality and the league is going to have a problem on his hands because he's not fouling like he used to. He's mm-hmm. looking durable. They they're unlocking another level of defense and for the Knicks who have been historically good in the Thibodeau era of with defense to raise it to another level just causes a whole lot of problems for the rest of the league. And listen, so I'll say this. Uh, Steve Kerr said that when he looks at a box score after a game, he looks at three numbers. He looks at assists, turnovers, and the other team's field goal percentage. Assists, did we assists, um, did we share the ball? Turnovers, did we take care of the ball? And how will we defend it? So I have I have it up from the, to, from the game. Assists. 28 to 21, we won the assist battle. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, turnovers, they had they had 20. We had 20, but they had 22. All right. 
uh, and then I go to uh, field goal percentage. They shot forty nine percent from th- from from the field yesterday, um, and we shot forty six percent. He's like, hmm, like so. How do we win? Then I go to rebounding, forty eight rebounds to thirty one. 18 offense rebounds to seven. As a wise man that lives in Miami once said, no rebounds, no rings. And those rebounds are from Mitchell Robinson. And for all the people who like to, especially people in our fan base that cry and yell and scream about development, we're not developing players. Listen, man, Mitchell Robinson is the longest tenure Nick on this roster. Remember that. Mitchell Robinson was here under, um, uh, what's this guy's name? David Fisdale. He was there under uh, Mike Miller, and he's been here under Tiz. He's seen it all. Like, he has all the stories. And like you said, he went from a dude that tried to block everything and will get into foul trouble and didn't realize, like, didn't realize that you don't have to leave your feet all the time to arguably the – like, he – it's a shame that they changed the all-NBA. They made it positionless. Because mm. he would have had a real shot at all NBA if this keeps up. But now there's n- like there's no chance he's going to be named one of the 15 best players in the league. And not that he is, but now there's no chance. So the best that now I think for in terms of postseason athletes for him is going to have to be um, defense. It's going to have to be all deep. All well, defensive play. You know, the thing about defensive player of the year is such a is such I mean all these awards are narrative driven anyway, but mm. like for him to like and a lot of guys like a lot of guys win it back to back like so like you look at maybe Triple J win it again um but it, it's a lot of narrative and 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 um reputation and I don't think nationally Mitchell Robinson amongst the casuals and in, and by casuals I'm including the writers because some of your casuals hell oh man. I don't think they're going <laughs> to vote for him for deep. Listen, right now he's 40 to one for defensive player of the year. You know, you want to throw some bread on that, you go ahead. Um, but all the NBA all defense team, I think there's only two teams. Maybe he has a shot. But then again, goes reputation. So, like, listen, Rudy Gobert is playing very well this year. So, he's probably going to take a spot. Um, so, but yeah, he, he he's 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 been our best player through seven games. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm and I'm glad that you brought that up because that goes into what I wanted to talk about next was what our what are what is our early season Knicks thoughts? And you know, I know you 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 missed the casual Friday. You missed the casual Fridays with with with, with XJ and Mensa and Andrew over at Knicks Film School. So I gotta I gotta ask you what what are the vibes after seven games. What, what? How do you feel about the Knicks after these seven games? I mean, after seven games, I think the Knicks are right where they w- should be. Um, I don't like. You want to say that maybe they should be three and maybe they should be four and three. Uh, maybe because they. But what's the like the game that they should have lost? That they the game that they should have. The game that they lost that they should have won, I mean, okay, like Boston, like, yes, we're up six to three minutes left. We also couldn't throw anything into the ocean, and Boston's right. a better team. Right. Um, New Orleans, I mean, as I've said a bunch of times, back-to-back Atlanta, New Orleans is, is, might be the trickiest back-to-back in the league. Um, <laughs> one of them. Uh, think about it. You spend – you get to Atlanta Thursday night. Listen, me and you have been to Atlanta. You know it, it goes up. You get to mm-hmm. land Thursday night. You go out. You do your thing. You play the Hawks on Friday. You get on a plane and you go to New Orleans. And listen, for people who've never been to New Orleans, listen, my bachelor party was in New Orleans. You can land at Louis Armstrong Airport at midnight. Get to your hotel room, checked in at one, and still have a night, yep. a full night in New Orleans. So. And I'm listening. These guys, I mean, they're 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 the guys. You know, they can go out like you know, and especially since that that's their only trip to New Orleans this year. So, so then you know, Cleveland, back to back of Cleveland. Uh, you can say we should have won Game Two at the Garden, but it's hard to beat a team twice, two games in a row. Um, whether it's home and home or both games are in one place. Right. So, like I said, at the best, they should be three and four. I mean, four and three, like. I'm not really complaining. We all knew the first 10, 15 games were going to be tough. Once we get past that, 
Um, and hopefully by that time, it should be the the offense should the 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 starters should be more improved. Um, you know, JB, whatever's going on with him offensively. Um, although, like I said, I'm not worried about him. And hopefully, Jewish can be more consistent. So, um, this so the vibes are proper. I think that's where <laughs> the vibes are. They're proper. They are where they need to be. And if we win on Wednesday night, and I say we like I'm on the team, shout out Bill Simmons. If we win <laughs> on Wednesday night, I think the vibes will be glorious. The Canada don't be like, we'll be back to 500. We would just beat Wemby. Um, I think we'll be in a good place. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree with you on those points. For me, I, the vibes are as expected and unexpected at the same time. We saw those first 10 games, Sean. We saw those first 10 games, and once once I saw them and the way they were arranged, because just like a, a, a dope album, sequencing matters as much as the so as much as the music. The music can be hitting, but if you consume it as an album, the sequencing can throw off your perception of how dope or how whack a song is. The sequencing of these of these games gave me a little bit of pause. We had the Knicks had two back to backs in the first five games two back-to-backs in the first five games you, you can't expect you can't really expect them to sweep everything right like you have to you have to look at it and say okay which one do you think is going to be a, a, a loss what, what do you think is going to be a win based on how the the team is constructed how the opponent is constructed you got to think about it like that so them sitting at three and four their expected wins at this point they're a, a game below so just like you said that four four and three based on their win differential and their mm -hmm. their um net rating or whatever they should have won. They're saying basically they they coughed up that Cav game. <laughs> the numbers are saying they should have won. They should have won that Cav game. Um, but no, I, I think I think for the most part it was expected. I I, I expected them to battle for five hundred throughout mm -hmm. throughout these first ten games. I didn't expect for the starters to be, well, I should say JB and Julius Randle. I didn't expect the, the slow start. Usually, I think the the overseas competition the international competition bump would get players more in shape to mm -hmm. compete but it just feels like now for some reason they're they're off and while brunson has been able to work his way in like kind of like he's he's being more effective than he is efficient i think the game against the clippers was probably his first bad game overall of the season like like bad where he i i watched him get hunted they was hunting that man on defense russell westbrook was was looking like <laughs> the westbrook that i saw christmas day with okc when i go to that game on christmas day mm -hmm. their knicks are getting blown out like fake comeback blown out so like 16 18. <laughs> yeah. third quarter i just happened to look up at the scoreboard this man already got a triple double calmly too. He didn't look mm -hmm. like he, he, if you were at the game, you were like, oh, he's having a good game. You wouldn't think that he was triple double rusting it on mm -hmm. him. And this is how he was looking. And, you know, Brunson hit a couple of, of, of clutch shots uh, or shots here and there that, that kind of settled and kept the Knicks in it, but he didn't have a good game. I think it was, I think it was important for Randall to have the bounce back game and to have the bounce back game in the garden i think yes. it was double as important to get the hometown support and you tell me how you feel about this sean pound for pound rj barrett best nick oh through seven games and i don't and, and this is at, this is with missing two games maybe neck and neck with mitchell robinson if you want to put it for the for the for the games played but right mm -hmm. now i think he i think he for the most part has exceeded a lot of people's expectations so i would say i think it's mitch um, because of the two missed games and, but he's number two and you could say he, maybe he's one a, um, mm. listen, we probably beat Cleveland if we, if, if RJ plays, um, and the game I forgot to just touch earlier, uh, was Milwaukee. Um, that game, listen, the Knicks, the, the, both teams took 39 threes. <laughs> Milwaukee hit 19 of 39. We were, I believe, 10 for 39. That's yep. the ball game. 
Yep. Um, I believe if we and I believe that if RJ plays, we could we probably win one of those games. So there's your four three right there. But it's amazing. Like, like someone asked me, like, what do you think RJ's doing differently this year? And I mean, yes, you could say he's hitting threes, you know, make or miss league. He's making the right basketball play. He's not forcing it. Like too often, listen, RJ Barrett has an elite skill of I can get to the bucket anytime I want. And plea, and I think a lot of people underestimate that, mm-hmm. um, or they downplay that. Like, no, like, and listen, RJ isn't the fastest person. He's not Hezzy Tween Hezzy. He's not part of Tween Hezzy gang. You he don't got the Louis bag. He has he a duffel got the bag. bag. He got the exactly. jet. Jan- I don't even know if he has a chance point. He might have the Amazon Essentials. He might have the Amazon <laughs> Essentials because he does exactly what you need him to do. We might be stepping up from Amazon Essentials. He, we we might be going. We might be Yo. going to luxury. This year might be the leap to luxury brand bags you're, right now. You're hilarious. <laughs> the Amazon Essentials bag. Yeah, I'm stealing. If that. you know, you know, and I know a lot of y'all know. <laughs> so. He doesn't have that crazy bag, but he can get to the rim. But it's a lot. There are so many times where he would just decide, "I'm putting this shot up no matter what," and get to the rim and get his shit boarded, <laughs> like get his shit punched, right? Um, right now, and it started with it started with Game Three of the Cleveland series last year. There was a hiccup in Game Six of Miami. We're not gonna talk about the rocker, but mm-hmm. he has played <laughs> very, very well since and he's making the right basketball he's taking what the defense is giving him and he's making the right plays and that and listen as i said on twitter because against uh against atlanta he hit that little he hit that little midi off the dribble jumper and i was like listen if that's in his bag if he can hit jumpers off the dribble top 25 player in the league full stop argue with your mom if you disagree Exactly, man. Yeah, I'm. I, and and I'm looking at his numbers now for for the for the season, he's over fifty one percent true shooting. Uh, like even for that in the in the first seven games, five games for him, that's highly important because we've been used to the R.J. Barrett slow start. Yeah. We've been used to that year after year after year. I do think FIBA had the FIBA effect helped R.J. immensely. Because he was able to play ball and play competitive ball against mm-hmm. high-level talent throughout the summer. So when he came into training camp, he was already ready for the season. He probably got the the slow start kinks out <laughs> in uh, in in uh, overseas, right? He probably got him out in that in that tournament, and now he's in his own version of midseason form, which means Absolutely. he's fully capable and ready. I definitely agree with you on the decision making and i think there's a confidence factor as well i think he's been ready for this leap and he's finding his niche within the offense i do think there's a lot to be desired with the way the ball is distributed i think quentin grimes is a weapon that's being left in the cellar and not being fully utilized it's almost like (laughs) <laughs> when you play a video game and you have to learn and get experience points to get all these moves and you have this cool move that you only do once in a while because you're like, oh, if I press L1 plus X, that's what happens. And I, mm. I, I love these other moves, but I, but this move is kind of cool. I should probably do it more. That's how I feel about Quentin Grimes in, in the offense. But with, with RJ, it just seems like he's taking the most for him the most efficient shots he can take using Mm -hmm. the best of his skills he's a down he's a downhill driver he's doing that every single time he's he's picking and choosing when he can maneuver in the lane and get he hit this scoop shot over zubak i believe zubak or plumley he hit the scoop shot going from right to left with the left hand that I, i thought was crazy at first but he had the angle when i saw it on the replay He's, he's taking more corner threes, which are the most efficient three-point shots or the, 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 the most highly likely for you to hit three-point shot that you can make. And I love the fact that he's doing this every single time. And, and if he's able to build on it, this once again unlocks another part of the Knicks offense that I think is can take them leaps and bounds beyond where 
they think they're going to go because then you'd have three bona fide guys that you can count on and RJ stepping up to be that and the defense of course it's still stout their number as of this recording they're second in defensive net rating third in defensive points allowed per 100 percent 100 processions fifth in steals the defense and a lot of that is Mitchell Robinson a lot of that mm -hmm. is their second unit clamping down shout out to DiVincenzo best game as a Nick so far Hart mm -hmm. starting to look like Josh Hart shout out to you Sean he ain't hesitating he's putting them up now make or miss he's putting them up shoot he's, the ball shoot the ball that's it Josh we don't care we don't care as long as you do do your Josh Hart stuff but you gotta shoot because gotta if you shoot. don't they're going to pack the paint and they're going to sag off of you. And he can hit. Even at the corner threes, he can hit those. And he can hit those consistently. So I love the yeah. way they're also working to find everybody in their spots. So I think mm -hmm. three and four, a lot of Knicks fans would have taken that. Probably would have said, would have more preferred four and three. But the, the, the other takeaway I have is I don't really fear any team right now mm -hmm. after these first games. And yes, I know everybody's... Um, getting acclimated to each other. They're trying mm -hmm. to fill each other out. They're trying to figure things out. Potential wise, I think if the Knicks play their game, they're in it. Anybody. They're in it with any team. It's just going to come down to who can hit the shots. Who can hit the shots when it matters. Mm -hmm. You need and that I'll offense say, on the stretch. Yeah. And I'll say real quick about RJ. Like I used to call him, I would call him Mark Teixeira, um because if he, <laughs> he has no. If you remember, Mark Teixeira <laughs> will bat 187 every April. Every year, slow start. 192, no home runs, three RB, and then he'd warm up. And I was like, okay, this dude is Mark Teixeira. Um, but this season, he's not. He started off fast. And I think also the, I, you hit the nail on the head with, with FIBA, and, but you've left out one thing. Uh, spending a month with, with, with Shea Gilders Alexander and becoming mm. a foul merchant, uh, a foul <laughs> line merchant, that's help because guess what? We said it, we said it all the time. If you take away two, if you take two of those drives where he would get his shit punched and replace those with you got fouled and went to the line, the efficiency goes through the roof. That's all. Just two the, turn those two missed shots into four free throws. And if you hit three to four free throws, we're Gucci. Six of six from the line last night, and Randall as well. Six of six. Please hit your free throws. I'm, I am begging y'all this season because mm -hmm. them first few games were rough, and I know it was rough across the league. But man, y'all gotta hit something like that one. I think it was the Boston game where they missed like twelve free throws. And I, yep. I bet if somebody does the numbers of the history of Nick games when they miss ten plus free throws, they gotta be in like the one percentile of winning, which means they've been losing a lot. They got to yes. be on that other end of the spectrum because it's just it's just what it is. And we talked about the Vaz. We talked about the Knicks. Wemby show is coming to MSG. Wemby MSG debut. Sean, what are your thoughts? How are you feeling about Victor Wemby and him having his first Garden game? I think that it is going to be a national coming out party for Mitchell Robinson. I think Mitch is going to stick his skinny little behind <laughs> in the basket. And it will be all. And then finally, and I just said this on, on, on TKW on one, finally, Mitch will get his respect as one of the better defensive bigs in the league. We've known this for years, but when it comes to the national like and, and you know, the, 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 the NBA, the NBA fan base at large kind of saw it in the playoffs, although they're just more blame. It's less about how good Mitch was, just how about how bad uh, Aaron, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen was. You know, the lights were too bright, yada, yada, yada. Um, I think, listen, I think Wemby is going to be, I, I think he's going to be rookie of the year. I I, I think that's fait accompli because, again, these awards are based on narrative as much as anything else. But Anyway, he'll do some things. I, I I'll say this: it would be Greg Popovich to to to, to watch the Boston tape and say like, "Oh, we're just gonna stick Wemby in the corner and just keep behind the three point line the entire game." But I don't know if they can afford to do that. Then that way it won't be the case. But listen, if you're in a state that where gambling is legal, uh, whatever Mitch's rebounds are, over. I think I think he's gonna get. I think Mitch is gonna bully him tomorrow. He'll get some points off. He'll score, do some things. But I think Mitch is bully him tomorrow. Mitchell Williams Hall. And that game is on national TV. Oh, yeah. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be, 
it's going to be time to show out. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be very interested. I'm, I I like what I see from Wembenyama so far. And these Spurs, they they're going to come out and try to 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 hit the kill switch early. That's the thing with these these young guys like Soshan, that's why I think uh Vassell is out. Vassell is out. So yeah. that's that's a big blow to them, but they play hard. They're a pop team through and through. And I think this is like Greg Popovich's best case scenario like this is this is his dream realized where he has a bunch of young good dudes that all listen that all listen and have all bought in i don't you know we, we may find out if some people may be less agreeable to pop than others but from what we're seeing right now they've all bought in and they're ready to play them them boys cannot hold the lead if you put mm -hmm. enough pressure on them they go you can come back i saw that against toronto but they they're definitely not to be slept on. They beat they beat KD's sons twice. They they they're gonna be competitive. So it's not mm -hmm. just about Wemby that we gotta that that the Knicks gotta worry about. You know. So I, I think it's gonna be good. I, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna do his thing, but it's gonna be more muted than what than what people think. Like he's gonna have a good game, but is that good game gonna translate to impact? Impact and and the win. Because mm -hmm, you can absolutely. get off in a loss. Yes. You know, we I remember we see it Curry all the time. dropping 50 plus and, and everybody was talking about that. We had a whole talking segment during the Knicks Warriors game about Curry going 50 plus in the garden. And a lot of people forget that wasn't a loss. They lost the game. That was it. That was in a loss. So I, I definitely think um I'm I'm interested to see when we play in person. I'll tell you that my, my guy Slim Vicious. I'm 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 interested to see him play in person. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be fun. And when Mitchell Robinson shows up, if he doesn't get into foul trouble or anything like that, and he keeps playing the way he plays, I think he's gonna get on a lot of the national radar. People who watch Absolutely. basketball already know, but I think he's gonna get on the radar. So talked about the Knicks, Knicks on their record, the game being the Clippers last night, previewing Wembenyana at MSG. Before we get you out of here, Sean, we talk about the NBA as well. Give mm -hmm. me your hottest early NBA season take. Okay. Um, I have a few. Okay, run um, them. So I'll start in order of least spicy. Um, one, Denver's winning the championship again. And when he does, uh, Jokic, is, there's going to be top 25 discussions about Jokic all the time. Mm. Um because at that point, two or two championships probably be have two finals MVPs. He'll win a third straight. He'll win his third MVP in four years. Like yeah. So there's that. Um, Boston was it was either going to be great in the regular season and flop in the playoffs, or flop in the regular season and or do great in the playoffs. Because as currently constructed, that five man unit might be the best five man unit in the league, and they are a freaking problem. The problem is one of the members of a five-man unit is Christoph Porzingis, and health is not usually on his side. So if he misses 17, 20, 25 games, and that team's already thin, like if they like there, this and if he misses time, it's gonna be a lot of uh Al Horford and a lot of Luke Cornett. And Luke Cornett is Luke Cornett, and Al Horford played in a 2007 national <laughs> championship game. So keep that in mind. <laughs> um but if they, but if you know they, he doesn't play the requisite games. But he's healthy for the playoffs. Then I think they're they'll probably win the East. Um, I'm not buying Milwaukee. Nope. Nope. But you think nope. you think the defense is going to crush him? The deep. Listen, I watched Jalen Brunson. The Knicks starting backcourt scored 65 points on on Friday night. Like that, they are going to put Damian Lillard in pick and roll until he throws up. I uh, listen. <laughs> Brooke, Brooke Lopez is great, great rim protector. Giannis is Giannis, but in terms of like winning the championship, no, not by Milwaukee. Nope. And I said it from day one. Then we do it all the time. These superstar trades. Oh my God, offensively, and we never look at defense. Mm. We never look at defense. Mm. And the last early season take I have, which doesn't look so great, I'm just gonna check on this team just to make sure to see what their record is, because I believe that hopefully they are still. A, they're, it's fun. they're the same record as the Knicks. The Cleveland Cavaliers, I think they're going to be the one seed in the East. They are um, built to, to to do a lot of damage in the regular season. They yes. have the perfect regular season uh, accumulate wins. Ironically, like Mitchell's Jazz team. 
ironically, Girl, like they they're built to win in the regular season for sure. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't, last year, I yeah, that. yeah, last year they had a they had a point different they had a point differential of a fifty five win team. Um, I think now they they came out slow out the gate. They had some injuries. Um, like Evan Mo not Moby, Jared Allen was out. Uh, Garland, I don't think Garland played in either game against us. Um, so they've had some a little bit of injuries in the beginning. But I think that, like I said, they're built for the regular season. And I think once they get everyone back and healthy, uh, I think they're going to – I like, I think they – I put money on them being, like, the one seed um, in the East. Now, what what happens after that? I don't know. But, I mean, I think they'll get out the first round. Like, I don't think they'll get bounced by whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I um, – those are my early season – those are my early season takes. All right. I got a couple quick ones for you. One, mm -hmm. San Antonio Spurs will make the play in. Two, one of the California teams, two of the California teams will at best be in the play in. So we're talking Lakers, Clippers, Kings, and Warriors. Warriors. And I feel like one of the consensus top five may not make the playoffs at all. I, I, I don't know who it's going to be, okay. but out of the Lakers, Clippers, Kings, Warriors, <sighs> Warriors. I, I think the Warriors are going to get a top six. I think Denver's getting a top six. Yeah. Suns. I, I'll, I'll include the Suns in this too. Yeah. Right. All the hot places. One yeah. of them is is not going to make the playoffs, and it's going to be a shocking result. I don't know I'm, who. I think I know who. Who you think? I think it might. I think it might be Sacramento. I I, I think because of I, I saw I, De'Aaron's injury, Fox's injury, and I was like. Mm. I think, I think last year's season was their we here season for the Knicks, and this uh, season will be the back regression down, back. A little, yeah. the, the regression. This um, is their Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah, where, where <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back on them, and they missed the playoffs. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like. I think they're playing. I think they're a playing team. I and um, because it's not that they stink; is that the West is just really, really good. Right. Yeah, and don't, those and are really... had a lot of injury luck last year, and now you already see it right now it's already starting to regress and regress to the mean. Yeah, exactly, and I, I think that I think that's really. I don't know if Luca winning the MVP is a hot take because he's in the MVP discussion every year. But I've watched he's the MVP I, I, every year. I, he is, but hey, bro, I've watched Mavs games. They're they're not guarding anybody. They're not guarding anybody. But nobody can guard them. <laughs> like and their those... offense is like their peak. I'm watching Derek um, uh, Lively mm -hmm. going crazy on them. It, it's. I'm just saying, if it was any year for Luca to do it, it asterisk if healthy, just like the whole West. The problem guys. is it's hard. The days of um, them handing out MVPs to teams seated six and below or over and i think that team is 39 to 42 written all over them mm. i actually have them as the 11 seed oh wow. i still think they're i don't think they're gonna make the playoffs like or oh, so well <laughs> yeah well, well i have them as 11 but i realize if they're 11 then we don't get their pick i'm like crap well actually maybe we could but like i don't think that te that team is like you said they're not guarding anybody we have so much ex evidence of teams that that they you could score on they score on everyone and they get scored on they don't do they don't do well. that was the kings that was the kings last year they, they, you know, they they were the best offense in the history of the league. So I, I don't mm -hmm. know, but they they offensively the Mavs look incredible, but they not guarding nobody. So who knows? Mm -hmm. But I think if it's this year, I think it would be Luca on the Mavs. Sean with a W joining us on the pickup game. Jeff J says YouTube channel. Please tell the people where they can find you. So you follow me on Twitter at Sean with a W underscore. If you don't know how to spell Sean, it's literally with a W. Uh, <laughs> every friday on the casual friday show on the Knicks film school podcast uh you can get that podcast wherever you get all your podcasts apple spotify google play android stitcher if that's still around um we also i also do Knicks uh kfs study hall on twitter spaces uh it's a rotating it's rotates between myself chris percy Yinen, and mensa smith um so i was off this weekend we'll be back on next weekend it's either saturday or sunday we're really trying to figure it out once football season ends we'll probably be on like we'll have a consistent schedule um and there may be a lot for the mecca coming soon uh so listen that listen 
me, Cedric, and Jeff, Cedric Sean, shout out to him, started live from the Mecca uh, coming up on three years ago during the pandemic. It was called Everyone Loves the New York Knicks on Clubhouse. That's our show. That's our thing. And it's and the streets miss us, so we got to come back for that. So follow Live from the Mecca on Twitter at Live from the Mecca, but there's no O and from, and that's where you can find me. That's what it is, man. Thank you, Sean. Thank you so much for tapping in. And thank y'all for watching. This is the Jeff J Says YouTube channel. And as always, like the video if you love what you're hearing. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Comment, subscribe, do all of the engagement things we need to do so that we can share this message along with the people. And you already know, man, your dreams are just chapters in your story that you haven't published yet. Do not be afraid to hit send. All right? We're going to talk to you later. Peace.